Shalom, back with part four. Let's continue here. All right. So, again, and he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. He's talking about a nation of people, the Edomites. All right. They are the people, the nation cursed to the Lord's judgment. All right. And bound them a thousand years. All right. So that happened after their Greco-Roman empires. All right. Now, remember, he never went into captivity. He just simply put that spiritual chain on them, and they went into their caves, all right? Remember, they come from the cleft of the rock. How do you think you get the word uh, Caucasian from? It comes from the word Caucasus, from the Caucasus Mountains of, of Georgia, Russia. You understand that? All right? And it means what? Cave dweller. All right. So he bound the Edomites you know, for a thousand years. Now, during that thousand years while they were in their caves after the Greco-Roman empires, you have what is known as the Dark Ages, which they call it that. And that's because the Israelites were ruling the Moors in Europe, you know, the Byzantine Empire. You understand that, people? So but let's continue reading. So the Lord cast them into the bottomless pit, which is Europe, and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that spiritual chain, that he should deceive, you see, deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, okay? And after that, he must be loose a little season, okay? So that little season began when they came back into power, which is known as the Renaissance, period, okay? And that's what Renaissance means, rebirth, rebirth of the Edomite back into the policy for a third and final time. But as you can see, it would be for a little season. The Lord will let him loose. Now you jump down to verse 7 and 8 here, all right? And it says, when the thousand years are expired, right? You know, the Moors are ruling, right? The dragon, okay, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, shall be loose out of his prison. See, that spiritual chain that was placed on him for the thousand years will now be removed, and he comes back into the power seat, okay? And that's the Renaissance period. And what shall he do then? And shall go out to deceive the nations again. Right? Because we already read here. Right? We already read. And the seal was set upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. At least for a thousand years. And then he would have to be loose again, right? But now when he comes back into power, what does it say? All right? And when the thousand years are expired, all right, Satan, who is Esau Edom, the white man, all right, shall be loose out of his prison, right? That spiritual chain shall be removed from him and shall go out to deceive the nations again that are in the four quarters of the earth. There you go. Now, do you understand, people? Do you get the understanding? You should, all right? It's not difficult at all, all right? Okay, so with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, right, the God power, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, right, to his son, Yahweh, shall so send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, right? And we looked up the word lying for lying wonders. Pseudo, it's all falsehood, you see? So everything that you're believing about Esau, his science, and everything else about him, you're living in the anti-Messiah system that he created. He created a falsehood, a false world, a false history. You understand that? He knows who the hell you are. He knows who the Negro, Latino, Native Americans are. He knows that you're the Israelites. He has all the records. He knows that. Okay? So he created all of this to keep you in darkness and set up the snares for you to constantly fall. He's the false accuser. So he sets up the snares, the traps, okay? The jinns, which means the same thing, traps, snares, 
all right, for you to constantly fall so that he can go ahead and tell the Heavenly Father, you know, hey, you see that? These are your chosen people, but look at them. They're busy sinning. Yet he's the one who sets you up to sin. He's the man of sin. You get it, people? Do you understand that? And that's clear when you get into uh, Revelations, the 12th chapter, around the 10th verse. All right? Gives you an example of that. All right, and I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God power, right? The heavenly Father, Yahweh, and the power of his Son, Yahweh, Shai, the Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren, who's the false accuser? Yeah, he saw Edom, right? Is cast down. He's going to be cast down. That's what you're witnessing, him being cast down, which accuse them. Accuse who? You Israelites, you Negro Latinos and the Americans, before our God power day and night. But let's read the next verse. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The testimony that we have of what? The testimony of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and of his son, Yahweh Shai, the Machiach, right? So they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Yahweh Shai, right? We were bought at a price. And by the word, right, this word, this truth, wisdom, knowledge, understanding of the scriptures, the testimony of Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shai, and they love not their lives even unto death. You see that? You understand, people? All right. Pray it made it simple for you. All right, let's get back. Okay. All right. So, for this cause, God tells to send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned to believe not the truth, right, which is brought out by his prophet, making these videos, going out there street teaching, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see that? All right, they had, they had pleasure being in darkness, all right, living in the lies that Esau has created for them. This, this illusion, all right, this world of lies, of evil and wickedness. You get it? You understand, people? All right, let's get back to Habakkuk, all right? All right, so I've given you much there, all right, plenty, all right. All right, so behold, the soul which is lifted up is... Not upright in him, all right? It's talking about his pride, okay? You read about that in Obadiah. It's just one chapter, verse 3 and 4, all right? You guys can go over there on your own, all right? But the just shall live by his faith. You see that? Who's the just? You Israelites, you Negro Latinos and Native Americans that make up 12 tribes of Israel. You're the just, you're the righteous, you're the meek, you're the poor. You are the saints, Psalms 148 will tell you that. Yeah, also because he transgresses by wine. The wine is his uh, doctrines, his democracies, his legislations, okay? His draconian laws, okay? And remember that the other nations are drunken off that wine, okay? Off her democracies. They're drunken and they're, they are mad, all right? You understand that, people? They're mad. Okay, and he is a proud man, see, his pride, and again, his pride is all over. We already read one thing about um, him, Thess uh, Thessalonians 2 and 4, who opposes and exalted himself above all that's called God, right? Well, let's go over to, uh, let's go over to Obadiah 3 and 4, all right? The pride of thy heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. See that? Whose habitation is high, talking about his skyscrapers. Everything he does is with concrete, because it all reminds him of being back in the clefts of the rock. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? See that? There's his pride. And though 
Thou exalt thyself as the eagle. The eagle should be a big buzzword. Again, this is parabolic, metaphoric, talking about all the Edomite nations, okay, throughout the history of Esau, all right? So that's talking about, you know, them as calling themselves the Greeks, the Romans, all right, the Europeans being, you know, the French, Germany, right, uh, Spain, all right, you understand all that, people? Of course, see in America, Babylon the Great. Get it? You understand? It's the symbolism for all the Edomite nations throughout history. All right? And you know that America flies the eagle as well. Though thy set thy nest among the stars, their space program, NASA, all right? And again, we never went to the moon. That's a falsehood, part of their deceptions and lies. All right? Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Yahweh, see? All right, so the America Babylon the Great's been circling the drain since 1969, the early 70s, regardless that they didn't go to the moon. All right? All right. Okay. He neither keepeth at home, all right? Uh, uh, Revelations. Revelations uh, 17. All right. And there came unto me one of seven angels which had the uh, seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth on many waters. Now the answer to that parable is in verse 15. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, multitude, nations, and tongues. Okay, you understand? America has over 800 military bases globally. All right? In America, Babylon the Great is known as a melting pot. You understand that, people? So this man is never satisfied, never keepeth at home. He's not. He's not the original Greeks, Romans, or Europeans. That was all Japheth. All right? You understand that, people? And what is he doing here? He's not the real Americans. He's the invader here. He's the real immigrant here. The Israelites, the ten tribes, were already here in the Americas before he ever came here. And remember that the Lord sent them here upon us. Again, you know, as part of punishment, you know, to put us into captivity, all right, for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. You read this in the curses, Deuteronomy 28, uh, 48, 49, 64. There's an example of that as well as 68. Got that, people? All right. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, while I'm here, let me show you about the wine, see? Okay. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth were, ma were made drunk with the wine, you see that? Of her fornication. You see that? And that's her democracies. You understand that? Okay. And the woman, we're talking about the whore, America, Babylon, the great Esau, Edom, was arrayed in purple, it was called a color, all right? And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. All right. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. There you go. That's what was written on her forehead. All right. That's who she is. Okay. Verse 18. This woman, the whore. Which thou sawest is that great city, America, Babylon the Great, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. See that? Who placed sanctions on who? America, Babylon the Great is the one who playing, who puts out sanctions on all these other nations. All right. All right. We're going to end this here. We'll be right back. I believe we're part five. All right. Give me a minute. Yeah, we'll be right back with part five. Shalom.